This is your main man, made man, back at it again. And y'all know how I get down over here. We talking boxing. Now, Eris Landy Law versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez comes out very victorious, ladies and gentlemen. Heads off to the entire corner of Saul Canelo Alvarez for pulling out a, a victory, honestly, in a match where I thought stylistically um, he was going to have tremendous, tremendous problems. And which, you know, if you look at this fight early on, which proved to be the case, but great adjustment by Saul Canelo Alvarez showing the ring veteranship, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen of all those fi almost 50 fights and, and and showing the ring veteranship to make a great adjustment in roughly round four to start to go to the body of Eris Landy Lore, slowing down, putting that money in the bank, which did pay off in the later rounds, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, great veteranship. Any talk or chatter about maybe uh, Canelo Alvarez should change his trainer of any kind of way, uh, hopefully that silence, that, that chit chatter, ladies and gentlemen, because that adjustment was just the right adjustment and the perfect adjustment for Canelo Alvarez to win that fight because honestly in the beginning of that fight I thought Canelo Alvarez was on the way to a loss if he would have continued at the current in the current pace that he was going ladies and gentlemen but I do not think this fight is nearly as controversial as many people are saying it is uh, some people are saying Laura won some people are saying Canelo won I think that a case can definitely be made for either fighter because if you do have either person winning this fight uh, it has to be by a one or two round margin. Me, honestly, I had Canelo uh, winning this fight seven to, seven rounds to five, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the, if there is any controversy about this fight, it's the 111, 1 and 17 scorecard, ladies and gentlemen, that I honestly do not know what the fuck is going on. I don't know. I don't want to uh, uh, give a, you know, a... Uh, 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 too many excuses about why that judge did that, but I will say that to beat Saul Canelo Alvarez in front of a pro-Mexican crowd in Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I guess it has to be a little more of a bigger margin than that. I'll just put it at that, but the 117 to 111, very disgraceful. I do not know what that judge is watching. Where are they finding these fucking judges, ladies and gentlemen? But, uh, you know... Whatever, but the fact is that to me is the most controversial part of the fight. But no doubt about it in my mind, Saul Canelo Alvarez pulled out the victory, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, so, uh, uh, I thought uh, Arislandi Laura came out of the gates boxing beautifully, showing the usual Laura that we usually see in most fights. Most people say that he was running a lot of portion of the fight, and a lot of people were saying he was running from Canelo Alvarez. That is straight up bullshit because evidently you've never watched an Arislandi Laura fight, and you see that he fights everyone like that he fought Canelo Alvarez. But not nearly probably be as conservative as he did with Canelo. But he fights everyone in that style. It's a Cuban style boxing style, ladies and gentlemen, in which they, they keep their legs under them. They where they keep moving constantly, keeping their opponent off balance, keeping them walking into traps, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Cuban style boxing. So for anyone out there who says that Eris Landy Lore ran from Saul Canelo Alvarez has never seen an Eris Landy Lore fight, and that's being real with you. But however, I did think that him using the style which he always used, uh, he. Was was a little too conservative and it proved to be detrimental to him winning on the scorecards because it was very believable that you could win the first few rounds fighting in that style ladies and gentlemen but after the punch output started to decrease and the movement constantly 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 moving and not willing to engage with Canelo started the judges had to start to see things a bit differently like okay now he's just staying away from Canelo a little too much you know at least in the first few rounds when he was getting away from Canelo Canelo was walking into jail no more than a two to three punch combination, but he was walking into him more so here and more so than ever. And Canelo couldn't connect uh, uh, flushly in the first at least three to four rounds. Well, three rounds I'll give, but the fourth round is where we've seen Canelo make the, the great adjustment of starting to throw the left and right hooks to the body, in which putting that money in the bank, ladies and gentlemen, slowed down Arislandi Lord dramatically in the later rounds, which made him more and more stationary and brought his out punch output down even lower, which gave many, many opportunities for Canelo Alvarez in which he took marvelously um the the more def definitive punching uh definitely went to Saul Canelo, Canelo Alvarez uh even though he was not nearly as accurate possibly as Lore was but the fact is the definitive punches uh went to Saul Canelo Alvarez he also we seen the damage on Lore's eye which he was cut a cut by a left uppercut ladies and gentlemen a uppercut from Saul Canelo not a head but not only dirty fighting but a up a solid uppercut cut uh Lore so that could have influenced the judges a lot more as well but to say that Lore won this fight ladies and gentlemen it just 
I thought he boxed marvelously in the first half of the fight. Uh, but however, in the second half of the fight, uh, he let Canelo Alvarez work him. The, the, the body shot started to pile up on Laura and, and just slowed him down. You know, we've seen the stigma with Arislandi Laura before. Uh, they stated that, you know, a lot of people thought that, you know, in the later rounds, he kind of starts to slow down because his punch output and, and he constantly moving, he's, you know, he slows down dramatically in the later rounds. As with Saul Canelo Alvarez, that was a criticism of him, of him as well. But it seems as if Canelo, you know, I'm very impressed with his stamina levels in this fight because he walked Laura down the entire fucking fight, ladies and gentlemen, and and then punched marvelously the entire fight. Wasn't landing as much in the earlier rounds, but still showing the stamina, that uh, the stigma that sticks with him, he has no stamina. I mean, come on, he didn't nearly look as drained in this fight, and he constantly moved around, that, chasing Laura around that ring the entire 12 rounds, ladies and gentlemen. So, heads off to Canelo on the stamina issues. This fight, like I said, happened at 155, so Canelo didn't possibly have to drain himself to make that 154 weight, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, rehydrated up to 177, amazing. Uh, Laura rehydrated up to 167, so Canelo's a big, big boy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm almost saying 9.5 out of 10, we will see him at 160 in the next fight so who are we talking here they're talking miguel cotto for saul canelo alvarez it makes sense ladies and gentlemen um we know that uh, Miguel Cotto is coming off a victory against Sergio Martinez, in which uh, even though, you know, see that match as it may, uh, it's still a victory over Sergio Martinez, and and, and Cotto is champion at 160. But, the, you know, the thing is, the question that she, this will be the first fight that we see Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Abram possibly working together on. This will be the first example fight, and it will be done on a major, major scale, ladies and gentlemen. So both stables now have champions, and they will both uh, uh, they have very popular fighters. We know Miguel Cotto attracts the third biggest pay-per-view revenue, ladies and gentlemen. So you put that with Canelo Alvarez, and you're looking at a, a humongous, humongous fight. It makes sense. Saul Cano uh, uh, for Aristide Lore, ladies and gentlemen, you know, he's still champion. He didn't lose his belt against Canelo last night. So, you know, this fight took place at 155, so the 154 title was not on the line. Just for most so bragging and moral rights of who was king at 154. But um, Aristide Lore still has, uh, you know, prior to this match, he was scheduled to fight Ishe Smith. That's uh, always a possibility. Uh, you got Peter Quillen at, at 154. Um, I think the Floyd fight is gone, you know, after this, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, you know, um, Aristide Lord, though, has, still has a, a bright future. He's still young. Um, Canelo, still young as well, just coming 24 years old. So, God, how many fights is this kid going to have before he even reached fucking 30, ladies and gentlemen? But, um, you know, it's still, these two, these two kids still have a bright future, and I'll still love to see them in future matches with elite competition. So, that's my post-fight thoughts. Um, I do not see what, uh, you know, I thought, uh, you know, one more p a side note, a lot of people are making the thing about the disrespect that Eris Lundy Law showed Canelo in the post-fight interview. I mean, there's bad blood between these two fighters. It's a, it's a Cuban and Mexican thing. It's deeper than a lot of us can even probably even talk about. But, I mean, uh, you know, these two, they, I mean, he walked up in Canelo prior to this fight to get this fight up in his press conference. So, if, if any of us thought that he, you know respected Canelo, that should be out the window, but maybe you would thought if after getting his ass whooped and let Canelo walking him down the entire fight, chasing him around that ring the entire fight, that he would have won a little respect, so, but I guess not, but anyway, to the next video, fight fans, it's your main man, mate man, and I'll see y'all then, peace out.